bound to repeat myself. No, I am bound to. I, I already no, am repeating you know, myself. Kate, we're rolling. Kate, congratulations on the film. Oh, thank you. Could, could we start, could you set the scene for us and tell us who you play and, and a little bit about mm -hmm. those events from 2004? 2004, yep. September 2004, Mary Mapes, who was then a producer at 60 Minutes in the States, and she produced uh, pieces for 60 Minutes, which Dan Rather, who was also the, uh, the news anchor at CBS News, uh, they did a story together on Abu Ghraib, um, uh, and then they flying high on that 60 minutes she, they pitched another story on Bush's Air National Guard service during the um, the Vietnam War quite controversial in the lead up to the second Bush election there was a long socialized in Texas a question mark over his service um, and Mary living and working in Texas pursued the story put it on and it was rushed to air and then the, the film uh, follows the putting together of that story and then the subsequent fallout between uh, Mary and Dan and CBS. It's, it's not really a story about Bush, is it? In, in, in a sense, it's more about the process, what happened and that political fallout. It's loosely based on Mary Mapes' memoir of, of, of the time, in, but in the same way that All the President's Men is not about yeah. Nixon, Truth is not about George Bush. It's more about the intersection between uh, corporate America, its political system, and uh, the, the media, and and also the process of getting um, a, a story together. And I think the only reason to go back in time, as recent as 2004 seems, um, if if it has a relevance or an interest today. And I, I think there's a lot of um, questions about the way our news, re we receive our news that we haven't really asked. I don't think we really process the, the difference between fact and opinion. Mm. And so it's, it's, quite a, um, it's quite a relevant, pertinent story, I think. Me too. Um, tell me about Mary. You, you met mm -hmm. her, I believe, many times. How, how did that process work? And what was that like for you in, in preparing to play at least a version of her on screen? Yes. Well, it's not you a know. biopic no. about um, Mary Mapes or Dan, rather, but I was really pleased that, that Mary was um, interested in meeting with me. So we met a couple of times in New York, and then we Skyped um, quite a lot. But it's not a, it, because it's not a biopic, um, and... You know, it really, the, the screenplay just read, and I think the film happens like a freight train because the, uh, the, the story went to air quickly yeah. and then the subsequent fallout was just, it was like machine, you know, trying to dodge the machine gun fire. It got blown out of the water very, very quickly because obviously in the lead up to the second Bush election, this was quite a controversial story because yeah. if you, you know, if what they said was true, that he skipped his service and went AWOL, then that means going to military prison. If you go to military prison, you have a criminal record. If you have a criminal record, you can't be the President of the United States. So clearly, um, it's, um, it was stuff that had so many questions for Mary, um, kind of inconsequential, stupid questions. Like, like what? What's, like what's in your handbag? <laughs> Is it organised or disorganised? But also questions about how stories are put together. Because something... Um, and I believe 60 Minutes is not really consumed by a lot of people in the UK, but certainly in, in, in America it's seen as, and was seen then, as being the gold standard of television investigative journalism. So there was a very high bar, and I wanted to know from Mary what it was like working at an organisation like that, particularly because she lived, uh, she was an outsider really, because she, she lived and worked in Texas. Um, not on the east coast where these where the, where this where the um, sixty minutes newsroom you know was based, mm -hmm. but so much of American politics originates in Texas. So it was a fascinating to talk to her about the sort of the intersection between Texas and American politics. Now you're working with um, Robert Redford here. Yes, I yes. You mentioned Old President's Man, which fantastic film. Mm. He's playing Dan Rather, and Mary and Dan Rather had this really interesting relationship, didn't they? Um, you know, he's mm. the on-screen guy, but he's very much a journalist as well. Tell me about working with, with Robert and his portrayal of Dan Rather. Look, I have, I'm in awe of, of, of Mr. Redford. You know, didn't know what to call him, Bob, <laughs> Robert. Um, but he introduces himself as Bob, so I can refer to him as Bob. Yep. He's had such a huge impact on um, film culture, I think, internationally, but American culture specifically. He's such an engaged and curious uh, man and so disarmingly natural as a, as a performer. We'd sort of segue into, um, in, into the scenes and I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to tell the difference between conversation and lines that he was delivering. He's so seamless. 
but it was it was it was great and wonderful that he was prepared to sort of harness his own screen iconography to to the role because in American news culture Dan rather he, he's in the line as, uh, uh, with uh, Walter Cronkite he's he's an icon and and came to represent um, the sort of the, the integrity that most people searched for behind the news. He represented. He was sort of. He's such an icon, and so I can't imagine anyone else but but Bob playing him because obviously because of the screen iconography and also because he brings the reference just without doing Completely. anything to all the president's men. He really does. Thank you so much. Thank Kate. you. Thanks. Thanks, Melinda. Great to see you. Okay, you too. Thanks, guys.